Hello guys, welcome to another video. Today we have here this beautiful Alpha 147, 1 1.916 valve and we are to take out the gearbox. So on this video I'll explain you my way to remove the gearbox on the ground, on the floor. But I also want to tell you why I'm, am I removing this gearbox. It is the third time that the customer has to do this job. This time I, I will try, it is the first time that the car is, is here with me, okay? I will try to figure out why so much interventions on the gearbox side. This gearbox is a very high quality one. It is the Fiat Drive one, the C530, I believe. And the customer already has another one here on the boot. And uh, this one is the original for the car. And they purchased a used one. And it is the same, okay? So as you can see over here, things are not starting on an excellent way. The customer already replaced a bunch of times this DMF and I told them, well, the problem is really that yellow color over there. So, on this uh, video I will remove the gearbox to show you how to do it and to reach the source of the noise. I'll show you the noise in a second. Taking out the wheels, I like to see if I have any play here on the control arms and up here I can see that I have play, I'll show you in a minute, on the top arm, the swing arm, but I also can see that this ABS sensor wire is not passed correctly, it is not like this, it is from behind, okay, and I also can see that this one here is completely loose and it will rattle on the drive and it can be very annoying. So the top swing arm over here, as you can see, has a lot of play. I have to tell the customer about this, okay? On the lower ones over here and on the sway bar, let's see that later because I will remove the subframe off to do this job and then I can see the place correctly. On this side over here we have similar problems. This cable is not through here, it's from behind, okay? This one is not through here, it's from behind also and because of that it is not connected over there and it is rubbing here on the shock absorber. We also have a play over here, very not noticeable, it makes noise. Again, like I told you on so many other videos, to avoid this problem, please do not buy anything else but TRW or Lamforder, and you cannot, I repeat, you cannot buy them online, for the reasons that I told you on so many of my other videos. And again, here on the lower part, we'll see, once we remove here the subframe, how it is on terms of uh, plays and problems. Let me try to remove here the airbox cleaner. Maybe from underneath, but I know that in your country, those uh, bolts that hold the radiators are very difficult to remove because of corrosion. So I'll try to do it up top, so I can show you 
a possible way to do it. What I can do, I'm so stupid, what I can do is to split it in two and that way be much more easy. I have a short how to replace the air filter on this and the GT down on the description. Nah, not that easy, still. I do not want to take out here this hose for the coolant. No, I do not. Come on! Yeah, because, because these two parts meet over here, like they have to do like so. One of them is broken, that is why I am, I am taking this out. And the other one, it is not down, it will have to go. For the 156, I think I can do it, but on this one I cannot. Sorry, real, really sorry. I thought I could, but I cannot. Here we go. So this, this tray over here is pushed down. Okay, like I told you on the short for how to replace the air cleaner. Again, this is not necessary to remove the gearbox. One of the hardest things to do on this job is to, to remove there the starter. You just have to take out to a side, just take out the three bolts that are in there. Now, my life is a little bit easier now because it does not have, does not have that support for the heater core hoses. Uh, that's bad, okay, but uh, it is easier because of that. And one bolt is missing already. <laughs> that one over there, the center one. So the the difficult, the most difficult one is still here. Sometimes what you have to do to be able to reach it better is to remove the EGR itself. In that way, it's much easier. But on this case, let's not. Okay. Then for the starter itself, from beneath the car, let's take care of that. If you want to know more about starters, I have a playlist for crank no start and difficult to start multi-jet engines and GTD and on that playlist you have there lots of videos for that, okay? You may want to take out the glow plugs control unit to do this. In my case, uh, it's not necessary. By the way, if you have a fault code related to a miscommunication, for example, of the uh, glow plug control unit, it is not. You firstly have to check out the glow plugs it themselves because the fault code can be misleading. There we go, this bolt. Next, remove here the three nuts for the cables, the selector cables. You can remove the nuts or you can take out the clips to remove the cables themselves. Personally, I started to do the nuts because it's faster, it's easier, and it's one less thing here on the gearbox to be trapped on the way out. I also did like this when it was time to remove the engine from the Alpha 166, the V6 turbo. If you remember, I have here one nut that is not from here, but it is very similar. My problem with the fasteners, they are, they are not original. It's just the shape and length and whatever. If the nut is close enough, it is close enough, okay? No problem for me. The only thing that I bother me, that bothers me is this original one is, is flat and uh, smooth, and this one over here, uh, it is not. So I will put a, non -sm a smoother one, because this one will create there some corrosion, because it is very harsh. Now take out the cables themselves. Normally for the cables, a 12 millimeter will do, normally it does. I did the same on the V6, I do always like this. As you can see, it went. Now on the back side, the same thing. There you go. That one came out very easily, it's not a good sign. Normally what happens is grease from the boot, from the, the axle boot, comes loose and goes inside of there and creates here a play. And uh, that way it comes out very easily. That is not good. Taking out here the two 18 millimeter, the big bolts that go through the gearbox to the engine. And uh, as you can imagine, you have to remove everything that is around the gearbox in order to remove it. And the bolts, of course, are one. Not too much tighten. It has to be much more than that. A one and the other one. Here we go. It is the same, exactly the same as the other one. Now it comes the very hard part. As you can imagine, doing this on the lift is, dif is difficult enough, but doing it on the ground is way, way more difficult. 
So bear with me and with my camera angles. I'll try to do my best and I'll try to show you most of things. Uh, I can see here he's missing one heat shield for the oil filter. Yeah, that's not good. Not good at all. Okay, so taking out here the exhaust, I will take out just this uh, section over here because I want to reach this bolt over here. Well, this bolt over here and uh, I want to reach back here onto this uh, engine support because uh, we, we will take out the subframe and uh, the, the back of the engine support over here is held on to this subframe, okay? As you can see over here, just two nuts to go and the next we want to take out here or lower this area here of the exhaust. It's very easy, two 15s, 13 over here and 13s all the way to the end. Make sure that your handbrake is off because if it is on, it will pull on this on this protection because this is part of the gear lever assembly and the, the handbrake too. And this on this side too, the same thing, two 15s, 13 and then 13 head bolts all the way to the end. You do not need to remove it off, but you have to lower it enough because the subframe is beneath this uh, sheet metal over here. Some people bend it to those people I say, please don't. And uh, the job is all, uh, around the same, the effort is around the same and to take out the bolts all the way to the end and it will be much, much, much easier to do it properly. So it's true, if you want to reach the gear le lever selector, you have to do this job, not the, the gearbox one, okay? But you have to lower here this panel, this tunnel panel, down, oh my god, and in that way you can reach the selector, it's just the way it is, no point arguing about it, okay? In my case I will just lower it to gain space, but in your case if you want to reach the lever, you have to do this exact job. You may have to feel for it. And I have a feeling that I have to take out these back bolts. Exactly. Also, I want to apologize to some of you guys that uh, I did not know that uh, outside Portugal some of these 147s and GTs, the earlier ones, or the later ones that is, uh, have DPF outside Portugal. In Portugal they are none. They were not homologated with DPF. But on foreign countries to me, they were. I told some of you guys that they don't exist, but I was wrong, okay? And I apologize for that if I was giving you false information. I promise you it was not intended. You can also take out here this heat card, but I will not. This is enough. Do, do not need to take out this all the way to the ground. But if you are working on the lever, you may have to do that, of course. And uh, if you want to, it is best to take out the handbrake. It's not very difficult. This sway bar is shot. Okay, as, as they move about like this, they are not good for Alpha 147, GT and 156. Now here pointing down. 
Now pull shit to the side. Now raise this up. These two tabs over here are not great. Let me just give it a little bit of a kink. Just with a pair of pliers. Cool. This one up. Now like this. Now through there. Okay, from behind. Okay. Now in the hole and put the screw back in. So as you can see, the way that the cable goes from factory, it is like this. So we have here two 18s, over there, over there. The same thing over here, 18, 18. A 15 over here, 15 over there. Then you have 18 up there. The same thing over here, 18, okay. But in the, in the meantime, you have to take care here of this engine support. You have to support the engine with a jack and with a stand in, to be able to do this with no issues. And also on some cars, and that is the case on this one, I have the power steering line that is attached there with a 10 millimeter head bolt, just right there, okay? And you have to remove that. If it was the 156, it is the same, but on the other side of the of the subframe. These are the bolts for the, the steering rack and they are always very, very tight because they are very long. So the impact can, can all, cannot reach here on the thread itself. It will only work the bolt like this, okay? The bolt being so long, that happens a lot. And also water will enter through the top of that uh, threading. A bit of anti-seize will be the best on that. I always do that. <coughs> The subframe is almost off. What I want to do next is to take out these two bolts over here, one here, the other one on the other side. And you may ask yourself, what about the swing arms? What to do about that? I will show you my way to do it. It is a very simple way, and many people do not understand why I do it like this. And I will try to explain the best that I can. But uh, it's very, very simple if you can understand. In the meantime, I will push up this engine and gearbox and support it through here because I want to remove this support over here. Very important, this one, okay? 24 over here, 19, 24, 13, 13. If it is on the 156, you may have that triangular thing over here, that support, that it is not, that goes also on here, okay? That is not on this car. So if you have that, you have to remove that first. This one does not have it. I'll try to do it with the impact gun. Maybe you thought you will not do. But what I want to do is not to take it off, I just want to alleviate the bolts to be easier next. As you can imagine, having here the floor jack and the support afterwards, it will leave me little to no space to work. So I have to do the best that I can. Don't forget also to, to remove the oil from the gearbox. Yes, now the center one, it will do. I just want to make sure I'm able, yes I am, to remove this once I have here a support on the on the oil sump. Yes, on the oil sump, not on the gearbox, because we want to remove the gearbox, okay? So the oil sump it is, uh, with some protection, some piece of wood, for example, to protect it. Lift it through the gearbox and put the, the stand over here. In the meantime, let's take out here this support. Look.
lower just a bit the, the whole unit to make some slack over here. While you have the subframe on, it is impossible to take the engine completely out because you have, God, you have the half axles resting on the subframe. And these are the big ones still. These are very precarious positions for the body. On the next day, you will be sore very much. Take some days out to do this job, okay? Heavy, be careful with your shoulder. And now we can rest the engine on the stand. Now these two bolts over here, the 18 millimeter ones, do not forget if you have the lines for the power steering to, to remove the bolt, the 10 millimeter one, usually is over here or on the other side of the car. We have a hole here on the arm to do this. very long and it is similar to the bolt of the steering rack but it is not the same size so it is no problem with that As you can see now the subframe is hanging over here but it will not fall off because we still have here the suspension things to to deal with uh, to see everything dangling to see if everything is okay and uh remind me to take out the oil from the gearbox because uh, i always keep forgetting next it's this nut over here okay just a bit like this now we have a 19 over here. It's not correctly mounted, this bolt. So the nut is on this side and the head is on this side. Also, we have two washers on this side, not on this. And I just like to tap it like this by hand. They will come out by hand, okay? If not, because your country may have corrosion, you can try this. Doing this on the ground is a bit difficult. Oh, my hand. And yes, I know I have some tools to do this. I should have some tools to do this, but I don't. But uh, let's carry on. We have to, right? Yeah. <coughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Okay, but it's out. It's very much out. Repeat on the other side and use a puller if you have one. Sorry. Now I want to try to show you how to do this without taking out the axles, the half axles because I know that sometimes that can be a difficulty for you in terms of socket size and whatnot. So I have here a method of doing this that may work with you. I have here some problems that I have also on the left side of the car. That is that uh, the size of this spindle over here is bigger because this is aftermarket. And by raising this arm up, it will hit there on the, the CV axle on the CV joint that also is aftermarket and for that I hope I can show you my trick of taking this off without doing too much of an effort. Okay, So we have to raise up, make sure that the fork is not binding there on the control arm and we want basically to raise here 
this control arm up, but without interfering there with the CV boot, with the CV joint too much. If it was OEM parts, they will come out like butter. And this one, it is also coming out because on the other side I already took it. So I have a little bit more wiggle room. Sometimes what you have to do is take out here, is to take out here the tie rod, the outer one, to make more, that is it, okay? To make more uh, wiggle room. But I do not like to take it out because in that way, the steering rack comes completely out of uh, whack and I do not want that. While you are doing this, you may want to wiggle the complete subframe up and down to be able to do what I just did, okay? As you can see, this next part is not pretty. You have to be on the ground, you have to push it um, like this, like that, and really try to make this work. It's really, really not pretty, but it is what it is. To drag it down. So it is out and if you are wondering yes the subframes here in Portugal are always like this no rest so if you want to purchase from Portugal you are more than welcome this wall joint is uh, okay it's nice but down there I have a play over there because I have that I'll show you in a minute I have the the washer the big washer it's coming apart and this one is already, this one is good too. But I have problems on there, I'll show you in a minute. So this is the best high quality that uh, Autodoc has to offer. Please don't. Here on the axle, I showed you on some videos of mine how to remove it here from the bolts. That is very easy to do, kind of, okay, not very, very easy. But on this video here, I want to show you how to remove it if you do not have this kind of axle. If you have that newer model one that you have on some modern cars, more modern cars. So you have here a piece of wood that, that you want to do like so, okay. And then you, with your hammer, <laughs> with your hammer, you want to whack it, okay. So you whack it here, then quarter turn and whack it, quarter turn, whack it just like that until it is off, okay? If you have somebody else near you, you can do it like this. You can, with a lever, you can try to pry on this, but not, not to take it off, just to help you to take it off. And while your friend, your girlfriend, your whatever is doing that, you give it some beans over here, okay? But I am all alone, so I have to do it like so. You can split some wood also with this, it's very convenient. So, not a great start. If I'm not able to do like this, I have to take out through the bolts. But I really wanted to show you what is failing me. This one, not the other one. The other one is bothering me. Yeah, splitting wood. Not great. Not a great result. Oh, I forgot to press. <laughs> I forgot to press the record. Oh my dog. I have to put it again. <laughs> nope. Ah. Come on. Just did it. Like I told you, this is very, very difficult. Oh, I know, I know something. I will put something over here to make some force. Not to work with my head physically, okay. Ah! Hooray! It is out. It is out, I say. So this half axle stays attached here to this uh, Thing. I keep forgetting the name, okay? To this entire structure of the 
of the suspension and just goes goes to here and I lock it with a zip tie for example something okay and the other half axle stays there yay why not I like to do it like this it gives me also to put the gearbox in this gives me one more vantage point to engage it so let's go yes yes the oil is out <laughs> okay uh, as you can see and uh, I already did a video how to remove it, how to put it in, what oil to use, etc, etc. It is a video that I did for the axle boots, okay? So it is down in the description, a video for this and the oil. Next we have two 15mm head bolts over here. They are not the same. Oh my god, so much, why? And uh, they are not the same on this configuration, but on the 159s, Yes, they are the same length. On this one, it is not. One is longer than the other one. Come on. Which is which I keep forgetting, but it is easy to see. This car ha already has a rebuilt steering rack. Uh, it's not very common here in Portugal to have failure on these steering racks. Really not, not, very not, not common. So you have two lengths. If you can see over here, the shorter one, is not quite there and uh, the longer one over here is too long now the 13 millimeter head bolt on the starter up there i uh, hope i can show you but it's not very difficult at all the two top ones are not there anymore well one is not there the other one was never there i want to see if the gearbox the threading of the gearbox is good or not to accept the third bolt i also hope to see the guide on the starter because that middle one right there where the bolt was missing is the one that carries the guide so i hope to see that being the last bolt it tends to be a little bit difficult to, to remove because now this, the weight of the starter it's leaning on it and if i had a smaller ratchet for this it also would be for the best but i will do it after this you do not need to remove at all the starter you just want to leave it there and just confirm that the guide is there so the guide is there but just barely it has to be a little bit further out but okay it's there okay so remember me to check out the threading as we are here we can take out there that uh, 18 millimeter nut Again, not very tight. And I really hope the guides from this gearbox to the engine are good because this uh, nut was not very tight, which means, which means sometimes, sometimes, hmm. And if you wonder, can I do this already? Yes, I can. Why not? I mean, with the weight of the gearbox still on the engine. Yes, I can. I will leave the front nut to go as the only one remaining now the thing is you want to lower here the gearbox a little bit down because as it, as it is it will hit here the body of the car so you want to lower it down a bit okay and for that readjust there the support for the engine beware that by doing that you can hurt here the upper engine mount that is over there okay so be sure that does not make a lot of force we want just to raise it down a bit just to be more comfortable for us to remove it and it will be a beast to remove believe me believe me normally i do not remove this once but having no airbox filter i will do it Okay, now I know how much I have for there. So this is low enough, okay? I have to use something to put in there. Really nice. Last nut to go. So we have two bolts, two long bolts on top. We have two nuts on the middle of the gearbox. And we have two 15 millimeter head ones here on the bottom side 
on the oil sump. Just remove all this 2 plus 2 plus 2 and uh, everything is good. We are dealing here with a lot of weight and it is very delicate this operation. So let's try it with a jack. Trying to balance the gearbox. Let's try here. Then lever it out. But be careful not to damage this part over here. This one is completely, completely gone. The half shaft over there can be a problem. Yes, it can. But let's deal with that in the, in the process. This chef does not have any ring. The gearbox may be wanting to escape from me. Try to lower it to gain to gain again control of it. I'm holding down here on the selector on top. What the hell is this clutch assembly? What the hell is this? Is this AP even? LC, whatever. Let's see this flywheel after. So two things, two crucial things are missing. The guides over here are completely missing, are not here. And that can be our problem because the incorrect placement of the gearbox onto the engine can do some scraping noises. So that is very crucial. Next, all of the bolts are completely bad, completely bad. I have to put new ones and uh, let's see what, what we have inside. This is AP for sure. It is very, very, very bad. I know that sucks is uh, uh, packaging AP. Oh my God, why? Why sucks, why? So only, only Valeo you have to trust. If you play the card that uh, Valeo is much more expensive. Yeah, think again, because it is the fourth time this gearbox is coming out. Now tell me the price of that on labor. Tell me what is more expensive. To put the correct parts, the quality parts, one time. More expensive, yes, they are. Yes, they are very, very expensive. Like twice the price, I know. But man. It lasts you a lifetime. Just because they have the part numbers for it does not mean you should purchase them. Remember my story about the uh, Mitsubishi L200? Yeah, very similar to this, to this symptom. Let me just take this off and I'll tell you in a minute, okay? What a mismatch. A Valeo flywheel? Or isn't? Yeah, I think it is. So a Valeo flywheel with a look AP. Uh, I think that is good. But what if it is a, uh, a, counter, a counterfeit one? Oh my God. It appears I do not have any scrape mark on the bolts over here. It does not appear to have that. But I think why I know what the noise was. I'll show you in a minute, okay? But, uh, I have to talk to the customer to see what's what with this flywheel. It is new, obviously. But I think what the hell is this? This, this engra engraving over here. Mm, maybe it was a Look one, well, the packaging was look, and this one is Valeo after all. I'm very afraid to trust on this. I really am. This is the, the clutch kit that I took out from the car, okay? And this is the clutch kit that the car should use. Is this disc over here, compare this one to this one. It appears not to have much differences, but I'll show you in a minute, okay? And the pressure plate over here, this is the one that took, came out of the car. And this is the one that should be used on the car. Most of the claims that I have on these types of clutches is 
very soon it gets very, very stiff. As we remember on that Alpha 137 that I did earlier last year, it is down on the description so you to see the customer complaint was really this one. And can't you see the difference? Can you count the number of fingers that this clutch has? This one having much less fingers, it has to be heavier because the same fingers have to do a lot more force. If the force is distributed for more fingers, it will be much, much softer for longer time. Also more than that, this one over here is a much cleaner finishing over here, mainly here on the thrust bearing part. And this one here is very coarse and I already saw them sometimes having problems on this ring over here. Okay, this one is relatively new, so no big problems are found over here. But once again, as you can see, the springs over here are much different from the correct type that you have over here. So the construction is different. Now, here on the disc, having no springs, one or the other, it appears not to have nothing too much to be concerned. But consider this, this is the AP1, okay, and this is the Valet 1. I have this center part here, grab onto the table and check this out. It has to have some play, because this is the movement that the clutch kit and the pressure plate will, will have in relationship to the flywheel. That's why you cannot switch and swap brands with the flywheels and the clutches and whatnot. You have to have the correct fitment. This one does not do anything. It's completely stuck. It's frozen. It's like just like this from factory, okay? It cannot work ever on this system. It has to move about just a little bit to allow for a certain freedom of, move, of movement, namely during the idle of the car. What does this car need? What does this car always needed from the start was the correct clutch kit. Every time they open, they took out the gearbox, all of the times they did the same mistake. They took out this one and they put again the same style of pressure plate and uh, clutch disc. Cannot be, okay? This one does not belong anywhere, it's garbage. You have to put only and only the Valeo brand. This one, for example, is for my SW and this pressure plate, it is an original one that I have. It's not no noticeable right now, okay? But it says there Valeo, if you watch carefully. It will go to my SW when that one goes out about that in the future video okay i'm sorry guys i do not want to be the bad guy i don't, don't want to be always ranting about stuff always telling bad about other technicians but uh, man sometimes this stuff totally crushes me it is very difficult to see that uh, so many times it was car it was intervened here on the gearbox and every time they did something it just get worse and worse and worse uh, partly, sometimes that is fault of the customer itself, sorry about that, yeah, because they tend to impede our, our improvement, try to stop our uh, work, because they don't want to spend any more money, they don't have it, I know, I understand, but in that way, four times paying the labor of taking out the gearbox, I think it pays off to put the correct uh, clutch kit in the first place. Now, I want to tell you a story about a Japanese car, a Mitsubishi. The Mitsubishi brand and the Toyota and, uh, and other cars do not use Look, do not use Valeo, do not use Sax. They use Isin or Exedi, okay? So, I had a customer, no longer my customer or my boss's customer, that was, uh, that it put a, a Look one, yes, it was a Look uh, clutch kit on a L200, a 4x4, it may have another name uh, in other countries, okay? It is a 4x4 pickup, yeah? So after that, the customer always stated that uh, it has this exact noise like it, you have there, here on, the, on this gearbox, exactly the same. And the technician of the other workshop wanted to repair the gearbox. On this car also, this is a second gearbox and it is the same. So the customer now, uh, notice that the clutch on that case starting to slip after 15 days of work and the other shop they got, took out the gearbox again that monstrous 
gearbox very big very heavy and put another look clutch kit and guess what 15 days later sleeping again in the that horrible noise at idle again the customer now returned to my workshop the workshop of, of my boss told me the story and i told them you do not need a rebuild on the gearbox the size and balance of the look clutch kit on that case does not have a, a dual mass flywheel better still okay uh makes that the because on those cars the clutch kit makes part of the weight the balance of the weight of the flywheel the look one was very much smaller in size and very much lighter which turns out all of the balance of the engine and of the gearbox it is completely off because the balance is not there okay it is now unbalanced in a sense in a sense and i told the customer let me take out again the gearbox now myself okay let me put an ace eyes in or exedi clutch kit on it and i will put new oil on the gearbox because they tried with some additives on the gearbox and whatever let me put everything as it should like factory and uh in the next morning you come here and you start the engine for yourself to see for yourself that the noise will be gone i i am totally sure of that okay and guess what it was now the exactly one is very 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 expensive in relationship to the look one oh yeah but remember this two or three times that gearbox came out on the four bar on the four by four it is very very expensive to do so and the hassle and the car and the customer does not have the car anymore to drive around and now it gets suspicious with this and the with this and that and what is it what is it not and it was the clutch kit was not from that car I keep banging here on look, yes, I know, but imagine the, the other way around. On Mercedes, on BMWs, on some Volkswagen models, you cannot put Valeo or Saks. You can only put look because of the same reasons. The balance is made to be like that with that clutch kit. It is not a uh, biplane, it's a single wing old war. Uh, airplane I don't know the model <laughs> very pretty so you cannot mix mix and match stuff please do not do that I know that the parts stores tell you that you can do that just because the margin of profit is bigger on some brands do not fall for that make sure to buy the correct clutch kit Very nice. Very nice indeed. So as you can see, we have here the throwout bearing. It is a Valeo one. For the application of this bearing in place, I will give you a tip or two on the assembly stage. Okay. If you want to reuse, for some reason, this bearing, I have a video down on the description so you to see how to do that, how to take it out of the press plate and how to reuse it. Okay. Now we have here the, the clutch disc itself. As you can see, it is a very different construction from the look one. And it has to be just that. It has to be different because we have this small amount of play here on this center, on the center bushing. And you have a, con a completely different construction on the disc itself. Very high quality. This is not a uh, internet buy. This is a local store. This is very high quality, first quality. Uh, of a component as you can see over here also you have a very high quality and very thin fingers for the the press plate a very good construction and as you can see it, it is very different from the look one very high quality don't forget to take out all of the grease of this surface over here next we have to center very well this plate this disc in order to assemble the gearbox correctly Another thing that some, some of you guys ask me is which side goes from to where. As you can see over here, we have here in Italian, lato cambio, which means the gearbox side. Okay, this side over here faces the gearbox, then this side over here faces the engine. 
It is a bit uh, counterintuitive because in the old days, when you have the disc with the springs all around, the outer part, the part that was uh, coming off a little bit, it was for the gearbox side, but now this outer part, this part that goes to the outside, goes to the engine side. It is a bit different being a dual mass flywheel. You have here these words that say that goes to the gearbox. It may say it in English it, and it may say it also in German. As you can see, you have here just a small display here on this center bushing. And you have to have this in order to absorb the motions of the engine and gearbox interaction. So it is just the way it's supposed to be. Of course, on the other one that I showed you, being a used one, it has a little bit more play. But this is just the way it is. Now next what you ought to have is a centering tool. This tool here I just modified with a bit of tape and uh, what this allows me is to center this uh, area very well over here. Okay, it's nice and firm. And this uh, part over here, the, the tip of it, fits neatly onto the crankshaft. I mean through the flywheel. Okay, so it has a perfect centering with the assembly. The reason for this is for when the gearbox is going in, the input shaft goes here very easily. Do not forget that this is the side that goes to the gearbox, so your tool goes like so, and this side goes to the engine. Okay, with this in place, you can now put your pressure plate in and your bolts. At this point you are wondering why do I am assembling this on the, the old flywheel. The customer did not want to replace it because it is a Valeo one, even though it was on the look packaging. I did not advise for that, but yeah, the customer wants to do it like this. So let's do it like he wants to do. It is being warned that uh, it may be an issue, but it is what it is. And I cannot force anyone to do what I want. So I advise for that. A new flywheel. As you can see, even though it is new, less than a year old, six months, I believe, it is a little bit. Yeah. The torque of these bolts is 25 Newton meters. At this stage, you can take out here the centering tool. And it has to come out really easy. It means that the, the clutch plate is correctly aligned with the crankshaft. I also have here this uh, dowels. One goes over here, another one goes on the other direction here on the back of the engine. These are the used ones, but uh, they are better, better than nothing. I just have to tap them in place. And in this way, the gearbox will be aligned with the engine and and thus align also here the whole clutch assembly. They will bottom out, so do not worry of hammering too much. Doing this with no flywheel is much easier, but I did not remove it, so I will not I will not remove just because of this. I just have to power through it. If you are wondering why I was doing here with the files and whatnot, I did the adjustment over here on the bottom side with the washers, I did the adjustment here on the fork itself, I lubricated everything as it's supposed to be, 
And if you want to know more about this, I already have a video. It is down on the description, a very thorough video to show you how to do this, okay? I just did the adjustment over here for the weight of this fork not to be on the push bearing. In that way, you will have a very much softer um, clutch pedal for a very long time and you will not have any binding over time. Also, in this way, it is not necessary to put any grease here on this uh, bushing, on this uh, on this cylinder over here. In that way, as the bearing is floating, really floating over there, the dust of the clutch will not adhere here to the grease. And in that way, again, providing you with a very soft pedal for a longer period of time. What I'm trying to do here is to engage the this shaft at the same time that I'm engaging the studs. This is not very easy to show you. Uh, the thing is, I want to put this shaft in, okay, over here. It will. Oh, this gearbox is oil. Oh my god. Binding on somewhere. Binding it somewhere. Okay. All of this, try not to, to damage anything. Not the seal, not the hoses. Beware that up there you have the hose for the eater core. It may be squished into in between the gearbox and the engine, so beware of that. But now you have another thing. This uh, shaft here will help you out to put in the gearbox, but now you have to rotate it ever so slightly to, to the splines to marry up, okay? And uh, at the same time, you have to rotate also the crankshaft, or later down the line, rotate the, the crankshaft with a gear uh, in place, in order to the splines of the input shaft to marry up as well. Okay, uh, let's try to do that and I'll try to show you that also. Make sure these two line, these two hoses are not binding in between the gearbox and the engine. So I think the spline on the shaft 
uh, on the right shaft is already in. I just now have to rotate the engine itself. So there the spline of the, the half shaft is no, no longer a problem. I just, I just really having to struggle. I'm just really struggling here with the engagement on the on the, on the plate. Very heavy. Very heavy gearbox. Come on! Very heavy, very heavy gearbox. Come on! Why? Why? Oh! Okay, finally, oh my god, sometimes the, woo, sometimes these uh, clutch discs have s such a tight tolerances that uh, we start to doubt everything, but indeed it was just a matter of uh, really good alignment horizontally uh, to be able to engage it. Well, this was one of the difficult the most difficult ones to do, but on the floor is always like this. It, it is always very difficult to do, no matter what. For example, here on the guides, I will put here the nuts and bolts, but I will just tighten it ever so slightly, one step at a time, one side at a time, to see if it goes smoothly, okay? If I had another person, it will be better, but like this alone, I have to do it like this, okay? So do not force anything in place. Do not start to use the nuts and bolts to to crash the assembly together. Do not do that, that, please. I urge you not to do that. In the meantime, see if here the hose is correctly placed. It is, okay. And as soon as possible, I usually do when I have the two nuts over here uh, already in place. Let's, let's take care here of the throwout bearing. So here it is, the nut, you want to turn it ever so slightly for this one, then the other one, they are near the starter, in that way you can start to understand if the gearbox is going in place gently without hurting the guides. Also on the two top bolts you should start to feel for them as well. I have a top one over here and uh, because of the weight of the gearbox you should start you should start also to turn it a bit to take out the weight of the back end of the gearbox I use this bolt over here again to ma to make sure that the gearbox is horizontal with the engine then I go again again to the nuts over here to make sure they are going in place softly this one it's a little bit more stubborn let's see maybe I have to alleviate a bit on the other side this one is a little bit more stubborn okay it's going in now if uh, I'm seeing that it is too much or I mean the gap is too big I have to back up a little bit this one and maybe even work with that top bolt over there to work with the horizontal position of the gearbox. 
So it is a, a, a game that we have to play here when doing this. Of course, if, it, if you are able to put a jack underneath over here, you will not need to mess with this top bolt over here. You just uh, try to put everything the more horizontal possible. And in that way, and in that way, do this. Okay. This was, this was hard. The gearbox is hold down with the two nuts and one bolt at top, okay? Now it comes the most critical part here of this whole operation. Because because if this does not work correctly, you have to remove again the gearbox. I'm talking about here the push bearing. So it's time to engage it. And what you want to do, what I usually do, is to just, just uh, move it here to touch, just touch the pressure plate. And now I do a movement, a very sudden movement to engage the, the ring clip that is inside of that push ring. I already have a video for how to, does it work, how to remove it and whatnot. If you want to know, it is down in the description. Because if I fail on this uh, movement over here, on this maneuver, I will have to remove the gearbox again and I have to re-engage that clip. So let's see if I am able to do that. Choose a good position to do so. Just touch here on the lever. Now with my palm, I'll do a very sudden movement in the, with a lot of force. Okay, keep pushing. I think it is. Now we will test it with the slave cylinder. You already saw this maneuver on the video that I did on that uh, slave cylinder, the, the one that I pick up that car on Nazareth. Okay, it is the very same procedure. Okay, make sure the clip is well fitted the way around. Now test if the clutch is working correctly. The first time that you press you can hear a click. That is the clutch assembly auto correcting its position. It's very nice. Test a bunch of times to make sure it will not fail. It is also very, very, very smooth. Just the weight of my foot drives it down, so we can carry on. Before tightening all the nuts and bolts of the gearbox, I will put it in position, the power train assembly, okay, to be able to do much more, not much more, but a very certain force, a very certain torque on the parts, and also in that way, creating more advancement on the work. In the meantime, you can raise up the entire engine, the powertrain, and uh, rest it on a much, much more comfortable position. Because remember, right now it is making force on that uh, uh, on that upper engine support, and we want it to be as straight as possible, like this, for example. Yes, I think it is perfect. And now we can carry on our job with the gearbox, with the subframe. And whatnot. For the subframe, I have the new sway bar to put in. Very easy to do once the subframe is off, of, of course. The gearbox is all tightened up all around. Not very difficult to understand. I already showed you how to take out on the disassembly. Now I'm doing here the cables, the holders for the cables, the selector cables, that is. Okay, three nuts, 13 millimeter head nuts. Very easy to do. Very easy to reach also. And next we will do the starter. Mm. 
Now for the starter, I will put the at bottom uh, bolt first in order to get the starter the straightest as possible so I can work above. And uh, I have to do this with two hands so I do not believe that I may be able to show you all of this, but I will try, okay? Make sure that the guide is uh, is aligned with the hole. This bolt over here, it is not necessary to tighten all the way, but it has to be very near. So the starter is in a position that is more easy to work above. I already have the support that was, that was missing, and also I have the bolt that was missing too. So I will assemble that in just in, the, in a minute, making sure that the Oh, the guy is, is not uh, crooked. It's not now. Like I showed you on the on the starter of the feed linear, I will not uh, tighten all the way because it will rotate on itself in order to the bolts to go uh, smoothly. This was the bracket that is missing. This goes to the bolts on top of the starter. This one's over here, and as you can see, the bolt holes are not round so they can be the bolts can be almost in place and you can squeeze it in and here goes the two uh the two pipes that go to the heater core and there there goes the cable the the large wire that goes to the, from the battery to the starter so it is a very important bracket and with that bracket on there it yes it is a little bit harder to work but it is what it is and you have to be professional and you have to maintain the things as they supposed to be. Like I said, the starter is now on a much uh, easier position to work. I just have to put the screw over here, the bolt, tighten it almost all the way and uh, preparing myself to put here the bracket. Now the difficult one, now the bracket goes in, the hoses and whatnot you can do it after tightening the the support. All right now, because we have the, the the holes that are not round, they are open holes. You have to hold down to this bracket down while you are tightening the bolts. Okay, having a bunch of different wrenches is positive because sometimes on these small spaces you can make a difference. Having the first bolt down, bolt it down, it becomes easier to tighten the second one without the bracket going out of place. Now the uh, other one on the back. This one is really very difficult. Most of you guys may want to take out the EGR valve to be able to reach it, but even with my big hands, as you can see, it was doable. Now over here, let's put in the hoses without breaking the holder. Okay, and now here the cable. Okay, very nice. Very nice, very, very, very nice. And now as you can see, this counterweight over here, by the way, do not remove this counterweight. It helps you a lot changing gears. It is really here for that. It is here for creating a balance while you are changing gears, okay? As you can see, I have more than a finger now of clearance to, to change gears. Very nice. Preparing ourselves to work here on the subframe, I will remove here the sway bar, just two or four, two plus two, plus two 13 millimeter head bolts here on the back of the here on the back of the subframe. I did clean it a bit, and as you can see, corrosion on this unit is very, very low or non-existent. Here in Portugal, it's just like this, even a little bit near the beach. Okay, so as you can see, the bolts are over here. If even if they fall out on top onto the inside of the of the, the subframe, 
there is no problem. I will just replace here the drop links to the other new sway bar and uh, let's prepare ourselves to assemble this beautiful subframe. So now just tighten all the way everything, 25 Newton meters here on the bolts. Drop links are in, just preparing ourselves to put the subframe on. Now the transmission shaft has to go in. Make sure not to damage the make sure not to damage the seal. Not to put in just a wiggle on it and the you don't know, break break this side. Do it like this. Let's try to put here this uh, ball joint. One side is always very easy. You can secure it with the nut. Now the same on the other side. And then you can, with a jack, lift it up. At all times the engine, the powertrain has to be secure with a jack or something. Be a log of some, something that you want to use, okay? No matter what, but it has to be secure, not to damage up there the engine mount, the top one. Okay, uh, speaking of that, every time you put a new lower engine mount, you have to adjust the top one. Uh, let's simulate that over here on this video as we are messing around with this. Next, we will uh, tune up that one on top. Not very difficult, just uh, Take the two, two screws off, wiggle the engine, put back together, and that's it. In here it will be a little bit more difficult because now we have the other side pushing on us. Probably, I did not want it to take out the steering tie rod because I do not want my uh, steering rack to be dangling so much. But probably now I will do that. Let's see. As you can imagine, doing this with a lift and with the floor jacks and all that is quite much more easy. But like this, we have to do what we have to do. Be careful not to mess with our fingers. Probably it will go now. So, okay, I get it. The end of the ball joint has to be turn, turning the other side. Maybe with a floor jack right now, it will be better. Like I said on the disassembly, if this were the original TRW or limb uh, control arms, it will be much easier because they are not so long as this, these are. Okay, the hole is over here. Again, it's a matter of uh, get, getting the hang of it, not a matter of force. Well, a bit of force. Now it will have to come forward a bit to be able to be fit it in place. At the same time, try to see if here the forks, making sure my fingers are not trapped. The subframe has to go over that uh, tunnel cover, which is a problem right now. I took out here again this, uh, this control arm. I pushed the subframe out and over the tunnel cover. And now again, inwards, now with the tunnel cover underneath here the subframe. And now again put here this ball joint and as you may know it is very difficult to do okay so and i already showed how to do it so i know, will not bore you with that okay now again take two raising the subframe up again make sure this uh, this forks over here are well in place this is not okay 
how it is on both sides. Make sure to have the nets on the underneath of the ball joints because they will come up, they will let go at any moment if you do not have them. Possibly you have to raise it up over here, but most of the times it's possible to raise here on the center part, at least at the beginning. So I will uh, screw in two or three balls on the other side, underneath, on the back side, and then do some force over here and on the other side as well to be sure that the forces involved are the correct ones. I'm not forcing anything. The gear, the steering rack is also loose, which is important. For example, a 18 head one, for example. Do this also on the other side to one or two bolts and make sure these two studs are correctly assembled too. See if the screw goes in, tighten it just by hand because we have to center this subframe and we have to see if the steering rack is correctly positioned and uh, also put the screws of it in. Start to tighten these bolts by hand and as you are doing that, keep pushing there on that plastic part, that plastic part will center, self-center your subframe. What this will do is, as you are moving the surface front and back, left and forward, you can compensate for any, well, not any, but you can compensate a little bit the camber left to right, and you can also compensate a little bit the, what is it called in English? In Portuguese, it's advancement, advance, as you have that measurement from the top of the shock absorber to the bottom kingpin, cannot remember. So if you move the subframe uh, front and back, you can compensate a little bit for that or for the lack of that. Okay, so do the same on the other side and you can tighten everything uh, to spec. Before tightening the subframe all the way, make sure that the two bolts for the steering rack go, go well. Make them snug and then Tighten the subframe all the way, and then you can tighten the yeah the steering rack all the way too. Next, let's see if here with the position, the current position of the powertrain. If we can assemble here the lower engine mount, if so, it will be it will be very good. If not, we have to adjust for that with a jack. Okay, over here. Normally, it will work because remember that you took out this uh, assembly already with this in mind so this contraption over here uh, was already studied at the disassembly okay to be able to take off easily and if it went out easily it also will go in easily now my 19 millimeter bolt where are you so next you have to put here the two 13 millimeter head ones over here and there and with that we can uh, take out here this jack stand and work a little bit easier here on the bottom of the engine of the car. In the meantime, don't forget to tighten the last, the, the bottom bolt of the starter. I keep forget, forgetting about that. There you go. At this stage, I will take advantage here of the, the floor jack to raise up the tunnel cover. Do not forget to put there that heat shield and correct the other one. Two 15s over here. 15 millimeter nut 
the same on the other side just the same and there is a 13 millimeter head one and 13 bolts all around the tunnel cover the exhaust can be secured with these two tabs over here and now you can put the bolt on again here on this metallic gaskets you cannot put any paste any exhaust paste on it now you can put the exhaust in for example two 13 millimeter head nuts and on the back side they have a step just like this one two 13 millimeter head nuts with a step Over here again, a metallic casket. Do not use any paste. And just like on any other model of these engines, you have the 12 millimeter nuts, the same that are used there on the exhaust manifold. You have three of them, whoops. Don't forget about this little bolt over here that holds down the power string lines. For the 147 it is here on this right side, on the 156 is it's on the left. Uh, this is for left and drive, for right and drive I do not know. Not very difficult to, to reach, it's just difficult to show you, but you get the idea, okay? Just tighten it all the way. On the 2.4s on the left side is easier to do without the the drive shaft. Yeah, I know. But on most models it is quite simple. For the assembly of these components over here, I already have a video for the entire suspension if you want to figure out how to disassemble all of this to do your procedures of the swing arms, of the shock absorbers, of all of, all of that. I have a very thorough video for that, very old video too, including how to adjust here the height of this fork uh, on both sides, of course. Also, I will replace here these flexible hoses. Already have a lot of videos for that. It is down on the description, a playlist for that, and much more how to bleed, how to purge, how to do many things on brakes, while brake maintenance and repair, I mean. For the replacement of the gearbox oil, I already did a video there is uh, a video for the drive shafts, how to repair an entire drive shaft. It is also down in the description. I normally put the oil in through the dipstick on these gearboxes. Someone uh, asked me a while ago, uh, is any anywhere else where you can put the oil? To be honest, I really don't not, do not know. I'm so used to do it like this that I really did not search anywhere else another way to do it so i'm sorry for that okay here on the airbox cleaner on the filter i have here this little piece of uh, wire that holds down the lid because the customer did not want it to replace this and i have to make sure that the new hermes or floor meter does not get damaged by the dust and debris that it was getting through this gap okay so now it is much better
As you can see, the noise is completely gone. The problem with the clutch, that rattle, completely disappeared. So the problem is completely solved. Now this this clutch kit will do for around 100,000 kilometers, depending on the acceleration of the car, depending on the driver. Okay, and uh, for now that's it. This is how I do the disassemble and assembly of the gearbox on the ground on these cars. This video will do for 156s, 147s, GTs and, uh, and, uh, and other uh, cars, for example the Lancia Libra and so on, okay? Guys, down on the description you have a lot of stuff relating to these kinds of works. I mean, I have videos for bleeding the clutch circuit, the master and slave cylinder, for example. I have videos related to lack of power. I have videos related to brakes. I did brakes on this car also, the flexible brake hoses. I also did the, over there the um, thermostat, how to bleed it, how to remove it, all that stuff, okay? Down on the description you have a lot of more videos that may be helpful for you. Also down on the description you have links for helps for the channel if you are able to do so. I see you next time guys. Bye!